Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Better Bots, SMTP, API, what does it all mean? Today we are going to be talking about the difference between sending email using the SMTP protocol and the API method. So let's go ahead and dive on in, look at what the differences are and how exactly we can accomplish this. So let's first look at what exactly an API is. So API stands for Application Programming Interface. So let's think about an app really quick. One of the most popular apps uh, used in the world, used by billions of people, is WhatsApp. So WhatsApp is a communication application, and it makes it so you can message your friends all around the world. So um, using WhatsApp, obviously, you're not going to have all of the information for all of the users and all of the messages that currently exist on WhatsApp. You're not going to have all that stored on your phone. All of that information is going to be stored on a server. That server is going to interact with some kind of cloud infrastructure, and that cloud infrastructure interacts with your browser or your device and then uh, gives you the information. And whenever you want to create a new resource or send a new message or a new contact or something like that, it works the same way, just the other way. You're logged into the browser or you're logged into the application from your device. That allows you to send all that information uh, to the cloud and then the cloud updates on the server. Now, what if you want to do something with automation? What if you want to automatically send people messages whenever they schedule an appointment with your business, for example? So if you want to add a bot to that process, traditionally, you'd have to have the bot log in as you and send the message as if it were you logged in. And this can be difficult because, you know, obviously bots don't have hands. They, they're digital. So this can be a difficult process. So this is where the API comes in. What the API does is it provides a surface that an automation like a bot can interact with directly. Uh, and modify any resources that need to be modified, send any messages, receive any messages, anything like that. So that's where the API uh, really provides its values. It provides server-to-server -server communication without the use of a physical browser or device. So how does this exactly relate to email? So going back to our example with WhatsApp, let's change that app out for uh, Gmail. So Gmail, one of the most common uh, email providers in the world, they are an application that does also have an API. Uh, and so this API uses a security protocol called OAuth 2.0, which is newer, it's more secure, uh, and it's actually a lot simpler. So now how does this relate to regular uh, SMTP protocol? So SMTP stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. Um, and this is from the Mailgun website. Basically, you send an email request and Mailgun does domain verification using some kind of DNS check. And then that verification allows them to send the email on your behalf. Uh, but it does show most of the time in the send notification that it did come from some kind of provider like Mailgun or MailChimp or something like that. Uh, this protocol is a lot older. It's about 40 years old. Uh, it's a lot slower because there is a lot more response handling that has to happen for this exchange. Um, versus with an API, it's, it's much simpler. Uh, so this is actually not really the recommended method anymore. According to Mailgun themselves, it says we recommend using API for email in pretty much any case where you're able to build it into your application. So um, just like with SMTP, you can use it for bulk and transactional mail, but unlike SMTP, they do have the advantage of being faster and more flexible. So even Mailgun themselves, who you know originally stuck with and provided SMTP services, say that it is better to use email if possible. Um, so what is this OAuth uh, process that you keep talking about? So it, you've probably seen this screen before if you used any uh, you know modern login with like single sign-on or any kind of thing like that. OAuth 2.0 is just a security protocol. It allows you to log in from the browser one time, exchange a token. Uh, and then store that token with a refresh token so that you can do stuff automatically. So um, think about something like Integromat or Zapli, Zapier or Pabli, that you want something to uh, operate on your behalf when you're not actually logged in. Um, so what they'll do is they'll just take whatever your request is, they'll send the authorization with your access token, and if they need to refresh it, they should have a refresh token they can store. That is an authorized request, and it manipulates any server data that needs to be Manipulate. So a lot of this is a lot of information, but a lot of the key points to remember. Um, it allows you to log in from the browser and authorize once. It acts on behalf of you with any permissions that you're authorized to grant. So you can actually give it permission to access certain things, but not others. Um, and it doesn't require any additional middlemen. You can set up your uh, API call as many times as you want with as many applications as you want, really. Um, and it's just a very simple handshake that needs to happen. 
So what about for bulk sending? Is this still a good solution for bulk sending? Uh, well, yes, uh, but APIs will often have rate limits. So it is best to time the sending out with whatever API provider that you're using, like Zapier, Integromat, Pavly, NADN, whatever. Um, you can time them to run in intervals uh, so that you time out the bulk request that you want to do instead of sending it all at once. So let's actually take a look at how that would look using something like Go High Level, uh, which is a very popular CRM, to actually uh, time these requests uh, so that you don't over overload the server, uh, but you're still able to use the OAuth 2.0 protocol. So using somebody like Integramet, uh, which is a no-code automation platform, I can actually set this OAuth 2.0 transfer protocol up really, really simply. So you can see here, I just have this simple Integramet scenario that whenever it receives a webhook, it's going to look at my Google Drive for a file that I want to send. Uh, it's going to do that twice for another file. And then it's going to compile them into an email and then send that email on behalf of my uh, info at workwithdas.com email. Uh, and if you look at that node, all you have to really do, if uh, you don't have it connected yet, you'll just click add. You'll choose which email uh, address you want to sign in with. So a lot of people have like a sales at domain.com or support at domain.com. Log in with that email through their OAuth 2.0 protocol process. It'll save the token for you. And then you can choose which email you want it to go to based on the incoming webhook. Uh, and then you can just attach whatever files you search from the Google Drive. So I'm going to link uh, a link to this scenario in the notes of this video, but let's go into go high level and see how this would look uh, in a bulk action. So here I'm on my contacts page. Uh, this is where I have all my contacts stored that I want to send messages to. So I'm going to select all 114 records. I'm going to choose the bot action here. And this bot action, I'm going to say, OK, proceed. And then the workflow I'm going to choose is my bulk Integromat email workflow. I'll show what this looks like in just a second. But you can see here in drip mode, I can choose what the batch quantity is. So if I only want to send two or three or let's say one at a time, um, and I want to set it so that it goes every so often uh, and add them to the campaign, then I can set that bulk action. And then as they get added to the campaign, we're going to have this webhook URL for that Integromat scenario that I showed. This webhook will send the contact information to Integromat. The Integromat scenario will then do its thing, send the email. And it's been working great. I've been having it run for a couple of weeks now. And every single time it sends the email as me. This is one of the test emails that I checked with. Uh, and it looks great. It looks like it came from me. There's no via mailgun or via domain, anything like that. It just as it's as if I sent it myself uh, from the UI. Uh, so that is. Uh, using OAuth 2.0, using the API to actually send an email. So there you have it. That's really the difference between SMTP and API. And as you can see, for most modern users, API really is the better way to go. Uh, it's more flexible. It works the same uh, as SMTP in terms of deliverability. And oftentimes, it can be even better. Uh, so now I know a lot of you might be thinking, well, I don't really know how to write code. And Integromat can get expensive if I want to send thousands of emails a day, let's say. Uh, so there are a lot of other microservices you can use uh, instead of Integromat that are not quite as uh, user-friendly, and it does require a little bit more technical knowledge, but they scale to millions of requests per month at very, very low cost. Uh, of course, I'm talking about cloud functions. I do have another video on this channel explaining how to use cloud functions. Uh, and if you go ahead and subscribe and comment and like this video and let me know, I will make another video showing how to use cloud functions to accomplish the same exact task that we went over today. But instead of using Integromat and having to pay for every request or having to pay for a certain bundle of requests, you can actually just have a very, very low cost in the less than a dollar for millions of requests. So if you like this video, you want to see more, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, you can get this Integromat scenario in the comments as well. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time.